Hi, I'm Senator Jim Inhofe, and I'm a Republican from Oklahoma. Tonight, the President's going to be delivering his State of the Union address, and we'll speak about bringing the nation together. And, you know, I applaud him for this effort. This is an important message, especially in the wake of the tragedy in Tucson. You know, we continue to pray for the victims uh, and for the full re and speedy recovery of Gabby Giffords. The president will also focus on jobs and various approaches to get Americans back to work. And I hope this president addresses the flood of regulations coming from the EPA. Uh, put simply, they threaten jobs and job creation. The president could find common ground with Republicans if he pledges to bring those rules back into balance. Right now, they pose a dangerous threat to the competitiveness of manufacturers and small businesses, particularly in America's heartland. In just two years, the Obama administration has put every institution that has made America great under attack, whether it's the military, healthcare, ag, or financial sector. Each sector thinks that that sector is the only one that's being targeted, but he's after all of them. I will say here very clearly, if the president doesn't heed calls for change in his regulatory policies, then Congress will have to change them. Uh, we will start with EPA's backdoor attempt to impose cap-and-trade taxes on the consumers and the employers. The president failed to pass his agenda in Congress. Too many members understood its destructive costs and, ne and its negligible benefits. Now he's using the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Clean Air Act to make it happen. Representative John Dingo, who's a Democrat from uh, Michigan, once referred to the EPA's global warming agenda as a glorious mess, and he was right. So what we're saying here is what he couldn't get done legislatively he's trying to do through regulations. The EPA's abusive regulation could cover 260,000 office buildings, 150,000 warehouses, 92,000 health care facilities, 71,000 hotels and motels, 51,000 food and services facilities, and 37,000 churches, as well as most of the farms in America. And what's the result? By EPA's estimates, global warming temperatures, mean temperatures, would drop about one hundredth of one degree by 2100. The cost-benefit analysis here is fairly straightforward, and so is the answer to this uh, glorious mess, and we should repeal it. By joining with Congress, the president would send a strong message to job creators that America is now open for business again. Of course, global warming regulation is just the beginning. Beyond greenhouse gases, EPA is developing rules affecting manufacturing facilities, power plants, refineries, and cement kilns. These rules are admirable in their intent to reduce harmful pollution, yet despite EPA's assurance, EPA's solution is wildly out of balance, posing unacceptable costs with questionable benefits. Let me give you an example. The so-called Boiler MACT, that's M-A-C-T, Boiler MACT rule, which covers thousands of industrial boilers across the nation. The respected consulting firm of IHS Global Insight estimates that the rule puts up to 800,000 jobs at risk. The United Steelworkers says the proposal will imperil the operating status of many industrial plants, putting tens of thousands of jobs at risk. The EPA is also preparing the Utility Act, covering this covers power plants, uh, coal-fired power plants, and the thousands of people that they employ are especially at risk. Now, according to a consultant to the United Mine Workers, 16 coal-fired plants in West Virginia 38 in Ohio, 32 in Michigan, 24 in Indiana, 21 in Pennsylvania, and 21 in Wisconsin are, in his view, at risk of shutting down because of the EPA utility rules. And speaking of shutting down, the EPA could soon require ozone levels that in some areas are lower than what occurred naturally in the ambient air. I know this is heavy lifting stuff, but it's very important. The EPA is relying on science that's nearly six years old and appears to be ignoring recent studies undermining its position. If the EPA continues on its current course, nearly 600 counties across the nation could be in non-attainment. And by the way, 15 of those counties would be in my state of Oklahoma. Now, in plain English, 
That means communities struggling to grow their economies will face new regulations, loss of industry and economic development, plants closures, and increased fuel costs everywhere. If you don't believe me, ask unions for jobs and the environment. Now this is a group of the 12 of the national and international labor unions, including the United Mine Workers, the Teamsters, and the Sheet Metal Workers. They say EPA's ozone rule will, quote, lead to significant job losses across the country during a period of high unemployment, unquote. The list of rules is long, so I won't delve into every one of them now, but, but the point here is simple. The president has an opportunity to follow through on his recent executive order covering regulations. Is he really serious about, as he wrote recently, quote, striking the right balance, unquote? Now, if he is, he should start with the EPA and work with Republicans to rein in an agency that poses serious harm to Americans' manufacturing base and to the hundreds of thousands of jobs it supports. In the meantime, I'm going to be working with my colleagues in the House to investigate these rules to expose their impacts on jobs, energy prices, competitiveness, small business, and energy security. I'll also examine whether EPA's assertions about public health and environmental benefits are credible. It's time to get America back to work. The path forward must include restoring balance in the regulatory process. Uh, we'll be holding the presence accountable uh, in, in the coming months. Just look at what the Obama EPA has already done to destroy jobs. We will see whether he's serious about jobs in enhancing American competitiveness. If left to its own devices, the EPA will undermine both. Now, as the ranking member, which I am, of the Environment and Public Works Committee, I'm going to be watching closely, and I want you to watch too.